The chart master is now here to give us his take on one of these picks, Carter Worth, of Worth Charting. What do you say? Well, uh, the one that most appeals to my eye is BABA. And uh, let's look at the charts and try to uh, figure it out together. So we have, as Tim referred, a stock that has lost uh, a tremendous amount of value. You see it here on the screen. In fact, its peak was $319 in October of 2020, and it made a low uh, just recently in March at 73. That's a 79% decline. The next chart, let's take away all the lines, all the arrows, and it's clearly a downtrend. But the current action, you can see that there's a little bit of a curl up, and that's what's important. So if we add a trend line to that, what you'll see is that we're starting to move above the trend. And the arrow that I've drawn is just exactly that. We have established at 79%, and now strength that is very impressive relative to most equities. Uh, so relative strength, good, bullish price volume correlation. And then the, another chart, the exact same chart yet again, instead of the automated actual trend line, we use the automated. The 150 day moving average is now inflecting. So whether you draw the line, as we saw in the preceding chart, or you allow a moving average to measure trend for you, it has all the hallmarks of a bearish to bullish reversal. So good news for Karen and yeah. Tim. Um, I want to talk Tesla, Carter, because you had a provocative call out on Tesla. It's, uh, we're expecting delivery numbers for Q2 over this weekend. Analysts are expecting slower growth for the first time in two years, especially because of the China lockdowns. What do you see? Well, I mean, look, this is a, this is a darling, or it was a darling that is less of a darling. But the question is, after dropping 50 percent, is it somehow taken care of, or is there more risk? My hunch is more risk, and let's try to uh, Figure it out. First chart. We have a trend. That's incontestable. I didn't make the line fit. It is the line. And we broke trend. And notice after breaking trend, we've been sort of consolidating this tight range below the trend line. So you have what you would call equilibrium. Another way to do it is to actually uh, highlight, and you'll see that here, what is known as a diamond formation. And it, it sounds kind of wonky. It doesn't matter what you call it. It represents equilibrium. After a great sell-off down 50%. The debate is on. Some people step in. Should we buy it? Should we sell it? But usually you're resolved in the direction of the primary move, right? So you have a sharp sell off. You have the debate, equilibrium, buyer seller. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it finished? Yes, it is. No, it isn't. And then you have the second down leg. And uh, presumptively, that's what's coming. You'll see here on the next chart a measured move. The width of this tight consolidation is about 170 points. Were you to project down another 170, it takes you to as low as $450 a share. Now, here's the remarkable thing. Let's just put this all in context. The street, right, in the beginning of the year had a price target of $1,200 a share, 50 analysts. They've reduced that number to 900. So they've reduced their estimates for this stock looking forward by 30%, but the stock is down 50. Usually price action is ahead of analyst estimates. We think the price keeps getting weaker and you'll see further revisions to price targets. Is the context to this um, sharp Tesla job drop that you're predicting a sharp market drop as well, Carter? Or sharp you know, you wonder. mega cap I, I suppose tech that, stock drop? Yeah, I, I suppose that would be convenient or would make sense. It would be tough. But in many ways, Tesla is idiosyncratic. And I think extreme weakness could happen in and of itself and have nothing to do with the market. But surely general weakness, uh, Tesla would participate. Carter, thanks. Good to see you. Carter Braxton Worth of Worth Charting. Dan. Yeah, I, I like his <laughs> charts. Um, I, I'll tell you this. Psychologically, if we're going to say it's an idiosyncratic, if we're going to say all that stuff, how much sentiment, positive sentiment still wrapped up in this thing that is down more than 40 percent, I'd say there's a date and time at a price, November 13th and 2020, the S&P added it or announced that they're going to add it to the um, S&P 500. The stock went from November 13th okay, of 2020 to January. It doubled. It more than doubled. I think if it round trips that move back to 400, I know that sounds kind of crazy on the chart. That makes sense to him. I think that would take out a lot of that overly exuberant sentiment that has built up in this bit, in this bull period. So to me, I, I actually think in the quarter is likely not to be particularly great, and that might be the impetus for it to break down. I mean, if Tesla went to 450, that would shake out. I mean, think of how Tesla had been for so long 
and still is in some sense a barometer for retail sentiment yeah. and, and how it's oftentimes the most actively traded option in the United States on any given day. That's a lot of retail trading driven. And so if it breaks to 450, that may be a good flush for the market. Maybe, I, I, I think it's going to be one of the last battles fought. And let's not forget that it's about 4.3 percent of the NASDAQ right now. So if the triple Q, uh, it was probably five and a half, six at one point. Uh, you, you can't tell me that if, if that has that kind of a move that it's not influenced by the overall market.